Hello everyone and welcome to Physics 216. This is the course on computational methods. And in this short introductory video, I'll just give you a brief overview of the material that we're going to be covering in this course. And I'll talk to you about uh, the course itself, so details like grading and things like that. Uh, and in the end, I'll also give you a little bit of mathematical introduction to one of the topics that we will use quite extensively. So let's start with addressing the question of what exactly is a computational method. Now, you've taken some physics courses. Okay, first of all, this the methods that we're going to be using over here are not specific to physics. In general, any branch of study that requires computation, that requires some kind of numerical calculation, these methods are applicable for. And let's see, if I can, I'll try and pick up examples from different fields just to give you a flavor of it. So anyway, so you've studied some courses before which require a numerical or a mathematical background. Uh, and you might have come across various kinds of problems uh, in these courses. Like for example, how do you find the solution of a given equation? Or how do you differentiate a function? How do you integrate a function? How do you solve a differential equation? Or if you're talking about matrices, how do you diagonalize? No. You may have seen diagonalization, I'm not sure. But how do you find the determination, of, uh, the determinant of a matrix? How do you find the inverse of a matrix? So these are some of the questions that you're familiar with. You've already seen them before. But there are also certain other problems uh, which you may or may not have seen. Usually these come in more advanced courses or when you're doing research. So for example, you might want to find the maximum or the minimum of a function. Or you might want to do some statistical analysis of some data or you might want to model a given system mathematically. Uh, so these are all different kinds of questions that one wants to address when one is studying or one is doing research. And typically, there are two ways of answering these questions. One is to solve these problems analytically. The other is to do them numerically. Analytically is straightforward and that's what you've mostly been doing all this while. Uh, which is just to write down uh, an accurate closed formula mathematically. So for example, if the question is to find the, the, the solution of a quadratic equation, then you know that for a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0, the solution is given by minus b plus or minus square b square minus 4ac over 2a. So that's that's straightforward. In This is a simple case. Uh, in this case, you can find the answer exactly. Or if I ask you to integrate a relatively straightforward function like sine x from some a to b, you know how to do it. You know that integral of sine x is going to give you negative cosine x. And then you put the limits and you know exactly what the answer is going to be. But very often, the situation is not so straightforward. Sometimes your function is very complicated and you may not be able to write down an exact mathematical solution for it. So, for example, instead of asking you to find the solution of a quadratic equation, what if I ask you to find the solution of the equation x equal to cosine x? Or, or, uh, if, or if I give you a 10th degree polynomial and I ask you to find out the solution to that. Now, there is no exact way of solving this. So, the way to do it is to do it numerically. Uh, so that's one reason why you might want to pursue a numerical method, which is because you are unable to solve the function analytically. There can be one more way, uh, one more reason why you might want to use numerical methods, which is that you don't know your function to begin with in an exact, closed, explicit form. So to give you an example, suppose, let's talk about integration. So if, you, if I just tell you integrate sine x, you know that it is negative cosine x. But what if I don't tell you that the function is sine x? What if I just give you a series of points? So I'll tell you what is the value of this function at 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, all the way till some, let's say up to 5 or something. And then I ask you to integrate this function. Now you don't know what the form of the function is. So all of your integration knowledge, which relies on certain formulae, it fails. You can't use that anymore. But what you can do is because you know the value of the function at each of these points, you can still do a numerical integration. So that's one more reason why you might want to pursue a numerical solution to these various problems.
So that's what computational methods is all about. We are going to look at different kinds of problems and we are going to address those problems, we are going to solve those problems numerically rather than analytically. So in order to do that, we need to first develop some kind of an algorithm for how to do this. So how do you, what is the algorithm for numerical integration? What is the algorithm for solving a differential equation numerically and so on. And then we are going to implement them. And uh, there are six topics that we are going to cover in this course. Uh, and these are firstly numerical integration and differentiation. Then how to find the solution of an equation. Then we will look at statistical modeling of data and doing least square fitting. Then we'll talk about minimizing functions, uh, random numbers, some Monte Carlo techniques. Then we'll look at solving ordinary differential equations numerically. And finally, we'll talk about some matrix related operations. So determinant, inverse, uh, maybe uh, even eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and time permits. Let's see. So these are the topics that we will address numerically. Now, once you've written down the algorithm, you have to implement it. So you have to write some sort of a computer program uh, to actually do these calculations for you. Because it's these calculations are going to get complicated. It's not possible to do it by hand. So in principle, you can program in whatever language you want. In this course, we are going to be concentrating on Python. And the reason for using Python is that you have covered Python last year in your ICS course. So you have some basic knowledge in that. But it's important to remember that no matter what programming language we use, that programming language is just, just a tool. You might, you, you might know C, C++, Java, anything. And in any of these languages, it is in principle possible to program these algorithms that we develop. So the main physics or the main content is in the uh, is in the algorithm itself. And the programming is just a tool to implement. But at the same time, if you don't know how to use the tool, then uh, knowing these algorithms is useless because what are you going to do with it without implementing it? So uh, make sure that you are up to date on your basic, we're not doing very advanced programming. So as long as you know basic Python programming, that's fine. And I'd already sent you an email earlier. There are, I put out some Python primer uh, worksheets and it's there on the Canvas page. So you can take a look over there. Uh, please try and solve those problems. If, if you know that level of programming in Python, you should be set for this course. And of course, you will learn a little bit more eventually, but uh, at least as a starting point, that's a good place to begin. So make sure that you're comfortable programming in Python, some basic simple programs. Uh, there's also the question of doing plotting. Now in this course, I, at least right now, I don't know whether we will require to make any kind of plots. I mean, it's always, it's a useful tool to know uh, because then whatever solution you get, you can plot it, you can check if it makes sense. Uh, but for our purposes right now, it's not strictly necessary. Uh, however, if you do want to pick it up, I think that's a very good idea and okay I'll tell you later we are also considering doing some uh, projects in the end and for your project uh, some of the projects might require plotting so then if you know how to plot using Python then it will just open up more uh, more project opportunities for you you can you have a wider pool of projects to choose from if you don't know how to plot then your choice will be restricted so uh, uh, read up. There are lots of different packages that you can use. Uh, VPython, PyLab, Matplotlib. These are some of the uh, plotting packages in Python that you can use. Uh, actually, one of the references uh, talks about it a bit. Okay, so let's talk about the references next. So on the Canvas page, I have already listed a few books that you might look at. In particular, I want to point out two of them. Uh, one is the book called Computational Physics by Newman and it's a good book to follow. In fact, I think for most of the topics I will be looking at this book and I'll be taking topics from there. <clears throat> uh, another thing which is good about this book is that uh, the author uses Python in, 
in, in implementing the algorithms that are discussed over there. So that makes things a little easier because we are using Python as well. Uh, in fact, this book also has one entire pretty long chapter on introducing Python programming itself. So uh, that's one more good place where you can start looking at Python if you're not comfortable with it. And this book also uh, discusses plotting uh, and animations using Python. So take a look, it's a very good book. If you look at, I think it's chapter two or three, which discusses the basics of Python programming. Uh, that's a good place to start. The other book that I want to talk about is a famous classic book called Numerical Recipes. It's it's a fairly old book, at least a, at least two to three decades old, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's a very good book for understanding uh, the basic algorithms, for understanding the mathematics that goes behind these algorithms. Uh, so the books themselves, they use Fortran, C, C++. I, I don't know if there's a Python version, probably not. So we are not going to be using their programs themselves because also they're not necessarily the most efficient programs. There might be other uh, professional packages written which can do the same job much quicker, much more efficiently. But as far as understanding the basics of the algorithm is concerned, it's a very good book to look at. So take a look at that also, depending on which uh, topic we're looking at. It's a, it's, it's a very thick book. There are a lot of topics that they cover. We won't be covering all of them. But if you see what topics we're talking about in class, and then if you go back and look at that book, it discusses very nicely with diagrams and graphs and everything, what exactly that uh, numerical method means. So yeah, so that's about the reference books. Uh, plus there are also lots of other resources online which you can look at. Uh, you don't have to restrict yourself to just uh, these three or four books that I'm talking about. Then, uh, what else do I want to talk about? Yeah, so why why do we want to do, why do we want to study these numerical algorithms? Because after all, there are software, there are packages that exist <clears throat> which, which can do the job. So why should we spend effort in understanding what exactly those packages do. Well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, a lot of these packages are uh, have been designed keeping in mind some sort of ideal cases or a case that is most widely used. But that may not always be the case for you. So for example, if you talk about calculating determinants or inverse of a matrix, a lot of the algorithms in the market are designed keeping in mind large n by n matrices, so like 100 by 100 or 1000 by 1000, because a lot of actual applications of these matrix diagonalization, matrix uh, inverse uh, processes require large matrices. So that's why they've designed them, optimizing them for very large n. But then what if you just want to do some three cross three or four cross four matrices? Is it efficient to use that entire machinery for the small case? Maybe not, depending on the algorithm that they've used. So for your specific purposes, it might sometimes be better to use a different kind of method than what is available online. Or there might be certain cases where there are limitations of the method that has been implemented in the existing softwares. So if you want to overcome those limitations for the specific problem that you are trying to solve, you might have to develop your own algorithms. So what we are doing in this course is, of course, we are looking at some general uh, algorithms, but the idea is that having studied them, you will get the aptitude to then develop your own algorithm for any specific case that you might require. I mean, in the same way that when you're doing like classical mechanics, we give you some very simple examples of pendulums and some blocks being pushed and sliding down a ramp and everything, which these are not very difficult problems. But the idea is once you know how to solve these, then once you have your own kind of problem that you're trying to solve, you can apply the same machinery and get it, get the solution for that. So same way, the idea over here is to give you some proficiency in understanding an algorithm, developing an algorithm, doing an error analysis on your algorithm. Uh, and then you can use this knowledge for, uh, for your own purposes. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the course itself. It's a short course, two credits. Uh, we'll have these pre-recorded lectures which I will upload and then on every Wednesday and Friday we have a one and a half hour slot each 
during which we will be doing our programming lab like a tutorial so i'll give you some problems and you will have to set and uh, implement them on python so also please make sure that uh, you have a working python compiler it's running you are able to run some simple programs on that make sure that's working so that uh, this course goes smoothly we haven't scheduled separate office hours as and when you have some question just write to me and uh, we'll fix up a meeting with you um, what else grading as far as grading goes uh, so there'll be the lab assignments which you will be doing uh, on Wednesdays and Fridays that is a big chunk of, of the grading uh, of your grades uh, we'll try to do an interwoven project towards the end there will also be some score for your participation and then of course there's going to be a final exam those of you who are auditing the course you are required to do the to be there for the synchronous uh, uh, assignment sessions the lab sessions you the project and the final exam i leave up to you if you want to do it great if not that's fine too uh, as always uh, we'll be strict about plagiarism so like i was saying there's nothing new about the algorithms that we're going to be studying they all exist online they exist online even written in python so in principle it's possible for you to just go and lift something and then paste it into your program but that's not going to teach you anything so i don't recommend you do that of course you can always read up things online even look at codes online get some ideas but then in the end it would be really preferable if you didn't just copy like read something understand it and then close it and do it on your own that's that's a good way to learn uh, and of course at any point if you have questions write to me email we can schedule or we, if it's not possible to do it over email, we can schedule the office hour and so on. So uh, at any point, yeah, just ask questions. That's that's very important. Uh, that's all that I want to say in the first part of this introduction, which is just talking about what the course is about. I want to discuss something called uh, Taylor series expansion, which you may or may not have seen before, or you may, you may have just about seen it in your mathematical methods course. Uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. 